Hello, this is a Unit 5.3 OCR A-Level Biology video on neuronal communication. I um, figured out a new function today on this software I use on my iPad and basically it draws as I speak. Sort of. So I've prepared all these slides just to show you what I'm talking about if we look later in the video here. And basically, I can speak to you whilst it's writing. So something's going on, on the screen in the background, and it makes it a bit more easier for you to understand, hopefully. So let's stop that now. Let's get back to the start on slide one. Okay. And I'm going to speak to you first about the structure and function of neurons. Okay, so firstly, when we're dealing with the structure and function of neurons, we've got three neurons you can see on the page. This is a photo taken from my notes. Um, we've got relay neurons, sensory neurons, motor neurons. But it goes from sensory to relay to motor. Okay, so neurons... Uh, long to transmit action potentials a long distance. They ha contain gated ion channels, so they can control potentials. They ma maintain potential difference. They have a nucleus with a surplus of mitochondria for active processes and ribosomes um, to produce proteins. And they're surrounded by a fatty myelin sheath which insulates insulates electrical activity but not all neurons have that myelin sheath so as you can see here on the page we've got the relay neuron here sensory neuron here and a motor neuron here and now I'm going to highlight the individual ones so first of all we'll start at the start with sensory neurons so sensory neurons um, carry signals from the sensory receptor to the central nervous system. So at the bottom here you can see the sensory receptor. Um, the trans direction of transmission is up here through the dendron. So the dendron is this bit here um, which carries the action potential to the cell body. And then we've got this axon. So the cell body's here and the axon carries the action potential away from the cell body. So the end here, the synaptic endings are within the CNS, central nervous system, which coordinates the response. So at the bottom here, we detect the signal. It's passed through the dendron, through myelinated sheath, which we can see here and I'll explain later, and it passes to the cell body which then sends the signal to through the axon to the nerve endings within the central nervous system so sensory receptors detect the stimulus and they send it to the central nervous system right then we've got relay neurons so they're the next one in and they connect the sensory and motor neurons um, within the central nervous system. So they have many short dendrites, so dendrites in this bit are these bits here. They're really short. They pick up the signal, so if we see here, it's the signal's travelled up here, it's got to our central nervous system, so it's got to the end of the sensory neuron. It passes the signal to the dendrites of the relay neurons, which pick them up through synapses, and we'll look at synapses later in detail of how that works. So the signal is picked up here by the dendrites. It's passed through the cell body and then goes through the axon to the synaptic endings to be passed to the motor neuron. Okay, so the motor neuron is our next page, our final neuron. It connects sensory and motor neurons. Its cell body is within the central nervous system. And it's got a long axon um, to the effector. So motor neurons can be up to one meter long. Okay. 
which is pretty far considering they're like single cells okay so we've got next thing that's started to be written on here is myelination or myelinated sheaths okay so what I've sort of gone over quickly here is these bits here surrounding the um, axon and dendron so in the relay neurons we don't have it but here surrounding the dendron we've got a myelinated sheath okay if we speed it up basically myelination is when Schwann cells are wrapped tightly um, around the neuron to form several layers of membranes and a thin cytoplasm, they have one, they're one to one to three millimeters in. They have interval gaps called nodes of Ranvier, which are two to three micrometers long. So the myelin sheath prevents the movement of ions. Um, movement only occurs at the nodes of Ranvier, so it's much quicker. It can be um, 100 to 120 meters per second compared to a non-myelinated which would be like 2 to 20 meters per second so myelination um, myelinated sheaths help to carry action potentials from sensory receptors to the CNS and from the CNS to effectors so they're found in sensory neurons and motor neurons as I've already said one meter long they enable a rapid response um, and at the bottom here, I've just took a picture from a notice that I've realised it wasn't very clear. So I've drawn on um, just to highlight what is going on in the diagram. And in the centre here, highlighted in pink, we've got the axon. So this is a myelinated um, axon. So around it, we've got cell membranes, which are these black lines. They're all packed tightly together. Um, all these cell membranes of Schwann cells, okay, that's the type of cells packed around it, um, they form a layer called myelin, which is insulative and it blocks the movement of ions. Um, so that there is our myelinated sheath. And this is what an unmyelinated um, axon would look like. So each of these pink blobs is another axon and we've got the Schwann cell nucleus they're all contained in within one Schwann cell so there's no tight package of our Schwann cells so we don't get these foldings of membranes and we don't get an insulative layer okay next we are going to look at sensory receptors so sensory receptors are specialised cell that can detect changes in surroundings, usually uh, energy transducers which convert energy from one form to another. Okay, I'm about to put in a picture of my table. There it is, and let's pause it there. This table is showing you the different stimuli and the different specialised sensory receptors to deal with that and the energy change which is involved. So let's look at each of them individual, individually. First of all, we have a change in light intensity and that's detected by rods and cone cells in the retina. Remember, these are just all examples. Um, so rods and cone cells in retina detect change of light and they convert that light energy into electrical energy. As you noticed, all the energy is converted into electrical energy and that is our action potential, okay? so. Another stimuli example is a change in temperature. These are detected by temperature receptors in the skin and the hypothalamus. Um, and that heat energy is then converted to electrical energy, okay, which can be passed down the neurons. Pressure on skin is detected by Purkinian caps um, capsules, so that's kinetic energy to electrical, and we're about to speak to that. I'm about to speak to you about that in detail. Then we've got movement or sound. So we've got cochlea, which are hair cells, so vibration receptors in the inner ear, and they convert kinetic to electrical once again. Muscle length, so we have muscle spindles, kinetic to electrical, and 
chemicals in the air slash food and we have epithelial cells um taste buds and they convert that chemical energy into electrical energy so when we have food we taste it on our tongue the food's got chemical energy the taste buds um detect that they are our receptors and then they send it to the cns and we therefore can taste okay so let's look at Pekinian capsules in a bit more detail so that is one example that you must definitely learn I don't know how important the others are I recommend you probably do learn them but this is Pekinian capsules um, to detect pressure on the skin so feeling touch and confirm that to electrical energy that is one example that I want you to learn in detail so let's have a look at it so there they sense pressure on the skin they're oval shaped with a series of concentric rings of con connective tissue pressure deforms the concentric rings which push against a nerve ending okay own they are only response to um a deformity so constant pressure does not affect it so if you're constantly applying pressure to um the pekinian capsule there'll be no new impulses generated so in a second we'll have the picture come up here it is so within our pekinian vessel which i've just pekinian capsule sorry we've got these fibroblasts and fibroblasts produce new connective tissue so these fibroblasts in green produces black rings of connective tissue in the center we've got a nerve ending and obviously the rest of the neuron and basically a deformity in these so if one of these changes shape so let's rub say we get if you can see what I'm doing here where my mouse is um, pressure causes a deformity here which pushes against our nerve ending which causes a signal to be generated so then we'll get our action potential passed down there okay that is quite a simple concept but if that pressure was maintained so if that was maintained there we would not produce any more um, signals hence if you push your skin you get the initial trigger of pressure so you you feel it initially touched but once you hold it there if you hold it at the exact same pressure you're not going to get any new stimulation of these nerve endings so you'll not get any new action potentials produced okay so those were sensory receptors now let's look at the harder biology of how we produce action potentials okay so 